If you've ever raced a Grand Fondo, you know it's all about racing and proper pacing. I usually start conservative and settle in at my own pace. But not in this race. Back at the first group, according to plan. Today I threw all of that pacing out of the window and raced to win. Well, that backfired on me pretty bad. Ah, fuck. I am smoked. My name is Jasper and on this video I'm gonna take you along on my first experience of the Trois Ballon Grand Fondo in France. What's up guys? What's up cycling? Fanatics! Finally another race video. We're in a region that's called the Vosges. Voges or Vo it's Vogesen in Dutch, which is easy. It's also a friend weekend, so we're here with the four of us. It's Friday today, we're racing tomorrow and we arrived yesterday. We have arrived in Le Puy. Le Puy in France. We took the bikes on top of the car. This is the house. It was like an eight hour drive to get here. We didn't really ride at all yesterday. We just pulled off the bikes, went to the grocery store to buy a shitload of stuff. And that's it for the day. This morning we were planning to go on a ride. The weather was actually terrible. It was raining. So we went out to pick up our race number and the jersey uh, in the morning. And in the afternoon, we actually went for a ride to spin out the legs, get rid of the, of the travel. And to check out that final climb of tomorrow's race, the plunge to Belleville. Actually a pretty hard climb. The apartment or the house we rented is actually situated right in the last 15k of the, of the route. So we're now checking the last part, which is actually the hardest climb of them all, I think. We're probably not gonna go up all the way because the last part is 24% on gravel. We'll leave that for tomorrow, but we do wanna get a ride in today. You know, try out the legs and stuff. 5.6k to the top, and that's it. I think tomorrow after 180k, I'll feel a little bit different when I start on this climb, but at least now I know how it is when I'm fresh. Okay, that's about five and a half minutes at 350 watts. Just a little effort to get some tension on the legs and feel how it is to climb on this bike and on the pace that I want to do tomorrow on these longer climbs. Ooh, there's flies all over the place. Especially after being kind of unwell for the past week. I wasn't feeling well, I went home from work on Monday and I was trying to rest up as much as I could. Didn't train anymore. I was okay yesterday, but not perfect. So I hope for the best tomorrow. It's been raining, so it's very, very humid. Look at those flies. So that makes it harder, I think. Tomorrow the weather forecast is actually pretty good. Ik denk dat er zeker 100 vliegen achter je aanvliegen. 2k to go. We'll leave that for tomorrow. It's 20 degrees Celsius, but it's intense. The humidity is quite high. high. It's, uh, it's suffocating. It's not raining, so we're not complaining. <laughs> You guys know I'm not really a beer drinker. I don't really drink alcohol at all. But my friends, they do like to drink a little bit of beer. So, we're gonna test out a new beer today. Uh, but it's recovery, friend. <laughs> Thrive beer, and it's a recovery beer without alcohol. With protein! <laughs> Ja. Ja. Het is een beetje een festival uh, uh, 
Ja, dit is, dingetje. Een, dit is wel een uh, slurpertje. Je gaat, hij gaat snel naar binnen. Er <laughs> ja. zit een ja. lekker bittertje in. Normaal is alcoholvrij bier heel, heel zoet. Heel zoet. Ja. To me it really tastes like beer. But that's me, because I've never drink beer. But it is beer. I think they brew it as beer and then they add the, the, the protein. So. Maar je vindt het wel lekkerder dan een andere 0.0 die je hebt gehad. Ja, dat is best wel goed dus. Ja. En de pannenkoek is ook goed. Die heb jij ook gemaakt. <laughs> Zeker. Eet tot drie per dag is aanbevolen. Na sport of doorheen de dag. Let's uh, call out the elephant in the room. The bike. I've got a new bike. This is the Yolio R12. It's kind of a mix between an aero bike and a climbing bike. And this is their, new, their latest model. I've been riding it for about a month and a half now. Done some proper training sessions on it. I've done like a super long ride, which was like 240K on this bike. It feels comfortable, it feels solid. It's not super light, so it's not like a super light climbing bike. Gearing is actually pretty big. It's got a double in the front, so that's 39. But with the 34 in the back, I still can still shift pretty light. So I think it's okay for tomorrow. I'll tell more about the bike in a different video. Now it's race day. Good morning. It's uh, 10 minutes to the start of the race. I'm uh, finding some cover because it's rainy. The entire peloton of riders is right here. Start line, right there. We're all getting wet right before the start of the race. Uh oh. <laughs> A little of a chaotic start. Here we go for my first Grand Fondo in a very long time, guys. I've done the Marmot, I think one of the most well-known Grand Fondos in Europe. One of the toughest Grand Fondos in Europe. I've done it twice in 2016 and 2017. And after that I did a bunch of road races. And in the last two years I hardly raced because of busy with work and also COVID of course but now I was back on the bike for a race super super excited for that this race was also a preparation for the Haute route because I was doing a five-day stage race in the Pyrenees uh, on one of the Haute route events a couple weeks after this race so I wanted to know where I was at and I wanted to know how hard I could race and how long I would last so my goal of this race was actually to race with the first group for as long as I could. I wasn't racing on a specific time limit that I had put for myself. I surely didn't think I was going to win this race. I just wanted to stay with that first group because I knew it was going to be hard and I wanted to, to just test out my legs. And it was kind of shit because I was sick in the week of this race so I didn't train at all for the week. Uh, prior to this and I felt kind of crappy until like two days before the event but I still kept with sort of my goal as you can see it was very very wet I couldn't tell if it was raining or it was just a spray but I was getting soaked completely soaked in the first like 15 minutes of this race and it was going fast and that's why I wanted to be somewhat somewhat in the front of the start box because Grand Fondo is like this, they go hard from the gun. It's a one day race, everybody's keen to ride hard and they just go full gas. So let's talk about the route. The Traballon has his name from the three Ballon climbs, the Ballon Servance, Grand Ballon and the Ballon d'Alsac. But there's three more climbs with a total of 4,000 meters of climbing in 178K of Grand Fondo racing. For you guys that care, that's 110 miles and 13,000 feet of climbing. So I would say it's a big race. The Plonge de Belfield, which was at the end, was actually featured in the Tour de France this year. Here's the start of the first climb, Ballon Servance. It's 18 kilometers and 730 meters of climbing. Very easy, flat start with a very steep part in the middle section to end relatively flat again at 5%. So just like in any race with a climb, my strategy is to start in the front of the pack and then let myself drop down through the pack during the climb, especially on that steeper part. This would allow me to sort of even out those steeper bits and ride at a slightly lower and still manageable power 
without falling out of the group straight away. And although I've become a, a relatively good climber, I'm still a super heavy guy. At the moment of this race, I was 82 kilos and my estimated FTP was around 385 watts. So races like this with a lot of climbing are a massive challenge for me. And the power numbers that I'm gonna share throughout this video might seem high, but just realize that the power to weight ratio is actually what really, really matters when a climb gets steep. And on watt per kilo, I'm in a disadvantage for sure against most of these lightweight riders, especially on those steeper climbs. At some point, I was hanging off the back of the group and I was kind of the last rider. And we're 20 minutes into this climb and my average power is already, already 390 watts. So that's above my FTP, which is okay. And I could push harder than this, but I didn't want to blow up completely in the first climb of the day already. So I dropped. And as the climb got a little bit less steep towards the top, I found a guy and some other guys and we went pretty fast. As you can see here, speed goes up. Um, and then we we sort of rode back towards that first group so this is the top of the first climb and i'm back in a group but this is not the first group by now i have no idea where the first group is until i see the race director's car usually there's one car or a few motorcycles in the front and as long as you don't see them you're probably not in the first group anymore uh, the shitty part is when I fall back in these climbs, I, I don't have any visibility on what's happening in the front. So if guys attack, if a couple guys ride away, then I will miss that. So here we are descending and I wanted to make up because I wanted to reach the goal of this race. My goal of this race, which was to stay with the first group until the first 100k. And I always tell other people it's a bad idea. To make your goal to be as good as someone else you should have a personal goal a measurable goal a goal within reach but that's just not what I did on this race the only thing I wanted to do was to race this race as if I could win until I couldn't this descent by the way was terrible the road service was very 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 bad obviously wet so I took it slightly on the safe side on this downhill. There's always other riders and they seem to be kind of all over the place. So I had to choose my moments to overtake them. And during a descent, I always have my map display in front of me. So I have an idea what kind of corners are coming up. This really helps me to judge whether I can go fast or I need to break. And speed and braking are by feel and by instinct. The front brake is always the most powerful and the most important. The rear brake is there for stability. And, and at roads bad like this, part of the braking is just to sort of contain your speed and not to go too crazy because it was so, so bumpy. And I was riding 28 millimeter tires with relatively low pressure and this really helped me on the shitty roads like this. And on these long stretches, my gearing was a double in the front, so that's a 53.11. And that's kind of handy because I could keep on pedaling and go and go pretty fast on a lot of these sections on this downhill. On many parts, it was pretty difficult to overtake actually, and it was kind of risky. And sometimes I had to squeeze past other riders because it was quite narrow. So I couldn't really go as fast as I wanted, but I still could overtake quite a a bunch of guys but I still didn't have any idea where I was in this race so as I came further down the descent there was nobody in front of me and I was rolling really, really fast. But when I got to this village, I saw a group and it was a big group. So I blazed through the red light to make the cut. And I was back. Back in the group, back in the game, back in the race. Ja, 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 ja,
gaat nu doen, kom maar. Helemaal dood. Niks te vertellen. Nee? Volledig shot op, best op de Niks te vertellen? Nee. We just descended the first climb. Well, back with the, with the first group. According to plan. So I'm happy. Oh, happy, ja. Yeah. Happy fear. Hello. Hello. Well, there wasn't much of recovery because here we go again. The attacks in the valley and the pace goes up. I still wanted to move up before we would start on that second climb as this would give me the best odds to stay with the group. In the meanwhile, I'm trying to chew in some carbs as I'm aiming for 90 grams an hour. I had mostly liquids in my bidons, a bunch of gels and two bars. The next climb was called Oder and this was a very shallow climb and it was quite easy to keep up. On a climb like this with gradients below 6% you can make use of the draft very very well. The group stayed together. Getting closer to the top it was slightly steeper with parts of 6% having me to push about 360 watts for the last 7 minutes. And at the top there was a lot of support for other riders. I was relying only on the feed zones in this race, so I had to stop at least once somewhere in this race to fill up my bottles. And I plan to do that as far in the race as I could. So here we go in the second descent. The base of the Grand Ballon. First, we're going up to Markstein. This is the biggest climb of today's race. It's like 25k, but the gradient is really low. It's nice to stay in this group because the speed will be pretty fast. We can all drag. Yeah, the road is open to cars. It's not all closed down. In the descents and stuff, it's still uh, very important to uh, to be careful. So here we go, the start of the Grand Ballon, the longest climb of the day with 24 kilometers. It was kind of a double top after 17k, reaching mark sign where the feeding zone was. And then there was a dip and a bit of a flat section. And then the last bit ended up at 6% at 1340 meters of elevation. Looking at the profile, there were three parts I probably had to push very hard to keep up right at the beginning what we're looking at now then just before the first top and towards the last summit of the Grand Ballon if I would still be there of course so just like the other climbs I started at the very front of the group giving me some wiggle room not to get dropped but would that be enough for this 24 kilometer long climb Five and a half minutes I already pushed 415 watts average so that's 5.06 watt per kilo which wasn't enough to stay up there and although I wanted to keep up I wouldn't do more than this with races and climbs like this I usually set a limit a power ceiling I can spike over but I wouldn't sustain my effort over that limit for longer than let's say one or two minutes Otherwise, I would just burn up my matches too early and too fast. The carbohydrate burn rate above your threshold shoots up tremendously. So before you know it, you'll be empty. Anyway, after getting dropped in that steep section, I found a group 
and we worked very hard to get back into that first group. So right here, I arrive at the group and I instantly go to the front. I just keep up my power. I'm pushing 380 watts right now and I'm just overtaking everybody. It's relatively flat. This is where my power is actually working and I just go to the front as far as I can. So when it gets steeper, I have wiggle room and I can fall back again just like I've been doing on every climb until now. Right here we are on that second steeper part of the climb that I talked about approaching that first peak. It was 6% so for me I could keep up which was nice. I still had to do like 420 watts but I could stay in the group falling back only a little bit. And this was the first time we had some nice views all day. We've been riding in between the trees a lot but this was an open area and we could see you know over the valleys and the views were amazing my only problem right now was that my bottles were empty i started with two big bottles and i had to get some water because if i wouldn't i i was sure that i was not gonna you know be able to sustain my power for uh, for a lot longer and there was a feed zone just over this top and then there was a small dip and a long flat section so I took the chance. I decided to stop, fill up one of my bottles as fast as I can, and then just hammer it down, getting back into that group before it would get steep again. And as we were approaching that feed zone, I saw a lot of guys getting support from the sidelines. So I, I knew pretty sure I was gonna be the only one that was gonna stop. Sometimes you're lucky. Took me four minutes to get back to that group. Four minutes pushing hard. Getting back to the group, I could even take a piss. How awesome is that? That's what I'm doing now. So I'm falling back again, having to ride back to the group again, but I found out it was relatively doable. It was kind of flat and I would be okay before that last push up to the Grand Ballon Summit. And that was the goal of today, to get in this group until the summit of the Grand Ballon. So I'm very close to achieving that. So that's awesome. But my legs are really getting super, super tired already after 100K in this race. That last bump to the summit went pretty fast. It was about five minutes pushing 380 watts to stay in that group. So really doable. The complete climb was 55 and a half minutes, averaging at 334 watts. And that's including that flat section and the bump and the stopping. So now we got to the top. I actually didn't know if this was really the first group or not. It seemed to be a group. But as I was descending, I still passed quite some scattered riders. So that tells me there would be still a few ahead of me. So a good reason to let it roll and to see what I can make up. Between the Gondolon and the next climb, Col du Hunsbrück, was some flat but not a lot. I was with a few guys, we kept the pace high and we rode back to the first group and before we knew it, we started on the fourth climb of that day. It started with a very steep 8-9% and I had a hard time to keep up already. And as we started, I had a black screen on my head unit. My head unit just stopped working. Very inconvenient in the middle of a race. I was so distracted and just stupidly focused on that thing not working and trying to reboot it that I lost that group almost straight away. 
instead of being focused on writing I was focused on the numbers I was seeing on the screen and I probably just should have kept it going and not care some riders will always go by fuel and don't let the numbers depict anything in their race but I'm not like that I'm always checking the data calculating how far I have left how hard I can go and maybe I need to I need to focus on pacing so much because I can't permit to ride with these fastest guys for too long without blowing up I just got a double mental punch in the face first I'm dropping out of the group because it's a steep climb second my freaking wahoo dies literally it's black screen so I've got no data anymore I tried to reboot it but it's black screen nothing so my pacing on power elevation distance into the race the time for food planning I've got nothing now I, uh, the only thing I have is my my the feeling in my legs which is terrible because I've been putting out a shitload of power to stay with everybody to the Grand Ballon, which I did so first objective it's completed <laughs> right there's the first group but it's too far to to get to them maybe in the descent but I don't have the map as well for the descent which I always use technology these days you can't freaking rely on that shit the rest of that climb was just terrible I had no idea if I was pushing 350 watts or I felt like pushing 350 watts and it was actually only 200 anyways I made it to the top and I did 317 watts average on that climb so that's a lot lower than what I've been doing before and this time I had nobody around me at the top and through the descent when I got to the bottom after some time I got a little bit of my screen back sort of and I think I could see a three second power number so I would at least know what I was doing I joined two dudes that I caught up with and as soon as the climb started I could just not follow at all okay uh, seems like I've got a little bit of my data back I can see a three second power number now I can see it's not very good <laughs> I'm kind of riding in the dark I don't know how much I've done but I do know I'm on the before last climb and I just checked the time on my phone it's a quarter past 11 so I've been riding for 5 hours and 15 minutes 2 hours to go 2 fucking hours fuck I don't know if it's my really poor pacing strategy or it's my illness earlier this week but I am smoked everything is gone and when I push more than 230 watts my legs just explode boom this climb is called Ballon d'Alsac it's going up to 1050 meters of elevation right now I'm up about 600 so it's like 500 meters of climbing and now it's gonna get really really hot on this climb I was just worth nothing I got past as if I was standing still all the other Grand Fondos, all the other climbing races I've done, I always started conservative and I would be the one that would pass other riders that would have been dropped out of the first group. Today, it was all reversed. I was that sucker dude that went way over his head, way too hard, way above his pay grade in the first half and I was smoked. Right here I'm putting the Martin drink mix into that bidon that I filled up on the Grand Wallon. I was aiming at 80 grams of carbs every hour. But it felt like it didn't matter anymore. The engine had overheated, the oil sprayed out, the compression is gone. And I'm just struggling to keep it moving. The only thing I have now is the, the sign I just passed telling me I'm at 740 meters. The top of this climb is 1050 so I would do about between 1000 and 1200 meters an hour so that would only be like 15 minutes but now it might be closer to 25. One thing I know is that when you're super fit 
and when you pace correctly it's actually easier to go deep and push yourself to the limit right now I'm suffering that's also training I'm training my hardness my perseverance and my willpower to continue I think it's pretty clear that I got hit by the man with the hammer. I was having such a hard time and my average power over the 35 minute climb was only 255 watts. That's my endurance zone. 35 minutes of torture and it was getting worse and worse as I was getting up that climb. Ah, fucking hell. Look at my leg. Good luck with that. Massive cramps. Good old cramping legs. It's been a while. Hey, we've got one climb to go. Plonge de Belleville. It's the hardest climb of the day. Sections of 20 and 24% in that climb. I just, I just want to finish now. And, and enjoy the day. Look at this. That's a flat. It's sealed, but it's really, really soft. So I'm gonna find a pump. I think I'm giving in to the fact that it's not my day. Short break at the, the food stop before this last sucker of a climb. Been uh, drafting a bit behind uh, whoever was passing me, but the cramps are still there. So that's gonna be uh, a bit of a suffer fest to get up there. I've never done a, a relaxed stop at an aid station on, the, on these Grand Fond boats. It's actually pretty nice, just like the weather. All right, so here we go. The last eight kilometers of this ride is at 8% gradient. Yesterday I went here, I did a little test effort, 340 watts. I thought that would be easy for today. Why is he huffing and puffing on his e-bike? Anyway, 340 watts. I figured that would be my climbing pace. Right now, I'm happy if I can do 250. Cramps are still in my leg. My hamstring on the left, I can feel it. It's about to explode. Jens, also a racer from uh, the Netherlands. We're both uh, having a bit of a hard time here. I must say, I don't know, a miracle has come down to earth because my cramps are gone. And I'm able to push like 300. So, so far it's all right. 2K to go, it's about to flatten out a little bit before we have the last 500 meters at 24%. But that's just at the end, so. We don't have to worry about that now. Thank you. Another medal. 
So the head unit, I can literally not read anything of this. The only thing I have is the time now, it's uh, 1.23 and we started at seven o'clock. So that's six hours, 20 minutes. That's it. So that's a pretty good finishing time. Hey, Thijs! In the tour finish, they actually ride up all the way to the top. Right there, you can see there's a little trail, which is on gravel, and it's like 20% to the top of the ski lift. But we didn't have to do that today, luckily. Or unfortunately, because it would be a pretty epic finish on top over there but this was really epic as well so still epic my official finishing time was six hours and 17 minutes put that against the winning time of five hours 29 minutes that's still a big difference we were at the grand ballon at the same split time so yeah they made up 45 minutes in the second part of the race i've got two files if you want to see all the details go check out my strava my advice for a race like this is to pace your climbs conservative and to choose a group of riders very wisely. Pretty much what I normally would do. But hey, you don't know what your limit is until you go over it once in a while. Look, nice view. Uh, so today I got the medal. Pretty awesome. Guys, check out more videos right here. Gonna see you next time. See ya!